What's going on, guys? Frank here again. And just recently, Blizzard mentioned that there was going to be some changes. They were considering the Druid class and what should be done about it. And today they did something about it. Not only did they do something about Druid, they also did something to several other cards. And uh, I just want to talk a little about what that means, how I feel about it, and if I think it's a good change or not. Uh, so the first thing that happened was, quite obviously, two Druid cards that were on everyone's radar got significant nerfs. One of which was Spreading Plague, uh, which now costs six instead of five. Significant increase. Honestly, I'm not sure if this is good enough, uh, because this is definitely a very, very powerful card. It gives Druid answers that it should typically not be able to have. Um, the fact that it costs six is relevant, because you can't play Spreading Plague and Nourish in the same turn. And that's a pretty big deal. Uh, it also gives you one less mana to work with on the turns you are playing Spreading Plague. It also forces you to wait till turn six, which is better for the decks that are trying to be a little more aggressive. So, all in all, a reasonable change uh, in the way it affects the the plays surrounding Spreading Plague. I I still think the ability is extremely powerful and worth six mana. Getting uh, any number of one fives from two to, f to, to seven even is, is an extremely powerful ability for six mana. And if you manage to get six or seven one fives for six mana, that is equivalent to one or less than one mana per one five with taunt, and that is just an insane value. So I think the benefit here is that it takes away some of the other options that Druid has to, to use on the same turns they cast their six mana spreading plague. And also it means uh, they have to cast it one turn later thanks to the increased mana cost. As far as the other card that took a hit, Innervate went from producing two mana to producing one mana, uh, which is huge. Significantly huge. And one thing Blizzard said was they don't really want a Hall of Fame cards because it's just not great for uh, iconic cards like Innervate because that's part of Druid's identity. And I agree with that. Uh, part of Druid's identity is producing mana and uh, ramping mana and accelerating mana and making extra mana, etc., etc., etc. So when you have spells like this that define Druid's identity, it's great for new players because you can look at these cards and be like, oh, I get it, this is a Druid theme, and it gives you a sense of self for Druid. Um, but I, however, that being said, I do not think Innervate is good enough when it produces one mana to see play. There, and, and you can look at cards like Counterfeit Coin that see play in rogue decks, which is fine because those cards enable all the combo cards. So if you have a card like Vilespine Slayer or a card like Edwin Van Cleef, you're gonna want all the counterfeit coins you can. Gadgets and Auctioneer also fine with cards like Counterfeit Coin. And considering that the only benefit for Druid decks is when they run one or rarely two Gadgets and Auctioneers, I could potentially see Innervate being used just as like a, hey, I can draw a card in the late game maybe. But considering there's no other combo applications with the card, I don't know if it's uh, as effective as it once was. I mean, there, there's no question it's not as effective as it once was, but I'm not sure if it will see play uh, in its current state. So one of the other cards that got a nerf today was kind of a surprise to everyone. Fiery War Axe, the warrior equipment, went from two mana to three mana, uh, which is a pretty big deal. Two mana was great. It was actually a sweet spot for this equipment where you would be able to play it on turn two, kill their two drop, still kill their three drop on turn three. Uh, now it competes with, you know, things like Stonehill Defender, which is what you'd often want to play on turn three, or Tar Creeper, or, you know, any of the other taunt minions that Control Warrior might have been playing. Uh, so having to compete with that spot, when you don't actually have that many great plays on turn two outside of Armorsmith, and a lot of times you don't even want to play your Armorsmith on turn two, it can be a little bit, a little bit tricky. It puts Warrior in a little bit of an interesting spot. And I'm not sure how the Warrior decks are going to look at going forward, if they're going to still run Fire War Axes, or if they're just going to, you know, ignore it altogether because it's just a little bit too conflicting on the curve. And the final basic card today that got a nerf was surprisingly Hex. Hex was not on anyone's radar. Hex was not a card that people were uh, clamoring about or thinking that needed you know something to be done about it. Hex was just a, a, a solid removal spell. For three mana, it turned any minion into a 1-1 with Taunt, which was great. Uh, however, now Hex costs four mana instead of three mana. So I think the reason cards like Fiery War Axe and, and Hex got nerfed uh, was because in the wake of these druid changes, I think there's a fear that the next best decks uh, would be like the Shaman deck, Shaman Evolve deck, or, you know, like a Shaman Control deck, or it would be the Warrior Control deck, which is putting up fantastic results at the uh, HCT this past weekend. 
And uh, there's also another nerf, the final nerf, in fact, which was Murloc Warleader. Uh, Murloc Warleader was well known in the Murloc decks, giving all of your Murlocs plus two, plus one. Now Murloc Warleader gives plus two, plus O oh instead. Uh, this is actually huge. This is a huge, this is, this might be one of the largest changes. And it's very, very, I want to say damning for the Merfolk deck. That plus one puts you out of range of a lot of things. It puts you out of range of Holy Nova, it puts you out of the range of Consecration. Uh, anything that dealt one or two damage to your Murlocs, this definitely, this helped it immensely. Ultimately, I think this is a good change for the game. Uh, it does hurt Murlocs a little bit, but there were definitely draws that Murlocs had where you can get Gentle Megasaur uh, and have this ridiculous opening draw with cards like Murloc Warleader and just, it's very hard to deal with. So now the control decks have a little more room to play with. Their area of effect spells have a little more room to breathe and it gives the, the metagame a little more room to survive, especially considering that Murlocs are mostly a neutral class and uh, Paladin Murloc has been a thing for quite a while. Also considering that if you were playing the Lich King adventure, which most of us most of us were, I'm sure, it was a, it was a fantastic piece of content, um, that you could pretty much beat a lot of the Lich King challenges with Murlocs in almost every class. So, you know, it's just, that's just kind of like a testament of how quickly and aggressive the Murloc deck can be. And I think just taking away one toughness uh, makes that a little bit easier to, uh, to deal with, I think. And I think that's fine. So one thing I am concerned about going forward is that due to these nerfs, you know, with Warrior taking a hit, with Shaman taking a hit, with Murlocs in general taking a hit, and with Druid taking a hit, that Priest, which was already an extremely powerful and dominant deck, or Mage for that matter, uh, is going to just consume the metagame with the Highlander deck, the, uh, the you know, with Razas and Kazakas and Shadow Reaper Anduin, because those cards are immensely powerful. Nothing with Priest really got hit, and uh, the strategy was already pretty dominant. So I think that's, it's probably one of my favorite decks in Standard right now, and I can only imagine it's going to get worse uh, when all the other classes have some of their weapons taking a hit. However, it's worth noting that a lot of these hits, like Fiery War Axe, or, you know, Hex, they don't actually affect the Highlander matchup, per se. So, you know, just because you can't play a Fire War X on turn two, your matchup against Priest isn't worse. So all these decks that had game against Priest before these nerfs should still have a game against Priest afterwards. So, you know, these are my thoughts. I think the Murloc change is fine. Hex is a little interesting going from three to four, but a lot of the choice removal spells do cost four, like Polymorph and Fireball. And uh, Fire War Axe, I think, is fine because it was, a, even in the aggressive Warrior decks, this was an incredible tool uh, to play Fire War Axe on two and then start deploying your creatures on like three, four, and five. And uh, obviously, I think the Druid cards needed it. I am a little concerned about Ultimate Infestation because I think that ability is still immensely strong. And a lot of the power from the Druid deck was not derived from Innervate. A lot of it was derived from Innervate, but a lot of it was also derived from simply being able to go turn two, acceleration, turn three, acceleration for four, turn four, acceleration, like nourish, and then casting something like Ultimate Infestation on turn five, which is still, it's still immensely possible. I don't think Innervate is gonna see nearly as much play, if any, but I do still think that the Druid decks have more than enough ramp to be a dominant force in the metagame. So uh, I guess we're gonna see, we're gonna see if these changes make a difference, and I'm hoping they do. And uh, please let me know what you guys think in the comments. I would love to hear it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.